Sin. Uh, he set our feet on a rock to stand on that rock, me in Christ Jesus. Uh, we can stand knowing uh, I'm free in Jesus. Jesus has set me free. Uh, he has saved me. He has delivered me from sin. Uh, we worship you. We praise you. Give you the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to be in the house, Lord. Amen. On a very, very cold day, we're still in the warmth of Almighty God. We can feel the warmth of Almighty God tonight. This time, I'd like to ask our usher to come up and receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. All Christians do pay tithe. Gladly given the offering as unto the Lord. You can give online at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks or on our cash shop, dollar sign NTCC Junction City. Or you can give in the offering basket as Brother Ron comes around. You give and God will bless you according to your giving tonight. Brother Ron, sir, would you please pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give unto you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the means to give unto you. We ask the Lord to bless the gift and the giver according to your word. In Jesus precious, powerful name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We do thank you for your giving tonight. And may God bless you according to your giving. Tonight I'd like to direct your attention to the Gospel of John. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Very, very familiar portion of verse of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I'd like to preach in a thought or title of a message, God Loves You. Pastor, sir, would you please pray? Amen. If there is something I can leave with you tonight, something that will help you, something that will comfort you, something uh, perhaps you're struggling, perhaps you're facing something in your life, uh, maybe some, this uh, thing will ultimately turn you to Lord. Uh, this thing I want to tell you, this thing I want to leave with you tonight uh, is that God loves you. Uh, for God, God so loved the world, uh, He gave His only Son uh, to die in your place. Uh, you see, tonight there are many people who are hurting and broken. Uh, there are many people who feel feel sometimes uh, perhaps they're just starting the journey of life uh, or perhaps they've already been on this journey for seemingly perhaps a while and seemingly uh, um, they've given up and they feel like life is just too hard and they just want to get but before you give up tonight uh, before you give up on life uh, before you give up on people let me tell you something there's a God in heaven uh, who loves you there's a God in heaven uh, who died for you there's a God in heaven who wants to help you? Who wants to deliver you tonight? A sincere love. The very creator of the universe. The one who made us in his own image. The one who is all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, omnipresent, uh, always there anywhere we need him. Uh, he loves you more than anything else in this world. He loves you so much, he sent his son. The Bible says what? Not to condemn this world but that the world through him might be saved in us through Jesus Christ. You see, tonight God didn't come, didn't come to condemn us. You see, condemnation, it comes from sin. When we realize we are guilty of sin, when we realize we've done wrong, we have a, a feeling of condemnation that comes over us. 
The act of doing something wrong, knowing it is wrong. Being confronted that what we did is wrong. We feel a sense of condemnation. We feel a sense of, I'm not worthy. I messed up. A, a sense of perhaps a depression and despair maybe comes over us. Uh, and you begin to realize, I've done wrong. When you confront a child, you ask them, did you do this? Did you take the cookie out of the cookie jar? Did you break that glass? Uh, did you knock this over? What is their response? Especially when they know they're wrong and they know they got caught. Their response is perhaps no doubt to look down, look down in, uh, in heavy eyes, realizing uh, that I've done wrong, knowing I'm wrong. I did something I knew that I wasn't supposed to, I shouldn't have done. See, no one has to tell them to stay out of the cookie jar. No one has to tell them uh, uh, what is right and wrong because every single one of us has a conscience. We know what is right and wrong. Uh, we all know that. We know how to identify what is right and wrong. But a person who's condemned, they feel shame and they feel guilt. They feel like perhaps uh, they feel lonely. They feel like perhaps uh, no one loves them. No one cares about them. Uh, I've messed up too many times. I've done too many things wrong. Uh, and God surely doesn't love me. No, God loves you tonight. Uh, God still loves you. Oh, uh, I've done the ultimate sin. Uh, it doesn't matter tonight. God loves you still. And he wants to forgive you. He wants to change your life tonight. A person who's condemned for a crime, though, they face the judgment and punishment for that crime. If you go rob a store, expect the punishment to be that you're going to go to jail. Or if you murder someone, perhaps, and depending on the, where you may be at, you might end up having the death penalty. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Uh, you murder someone, you're going to die. And the result of sin tonight is death. Because it is the transgression of God's law. In Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20, he said, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness uh, of the wicked shall be upon him. You, you see, tonight we've all sinned, uh, and we've all come short of the glory of God according to the Bible. We've all messed up. Uh, we've all made mistakes. But see, tonight uh, there's a chance. Uh, there's another opportunity to come to a God that says, uh, I understand you messed up, uh, but I still love you. I understand uh, you sinned. You came short uh, of what I expected, uh, but I still love you. I'm still willing to give Give you another chance. I'm still willing to give you another opportunity. I'm still willing to, to forgive you and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. But we have to come to God. God wants to forgive you. He doesn't want you to live in condemnation. He doesn't want to live. He doesn't want you to live under the guilt and shame of sin and the, and the, and the um, cloud of, of judgment that comes upon all who don't know Jesus. He wants to forgive you. We read about the woman that Jesus forgave, the woman caught in adultery. In John chapter 8, verses 10 through 11, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto a woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Here is this woman, by all accounts, uh, according to the Mosaic law, according to the very law that Moses had received from God himself, uh, she should have been stoned to death. Uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the man as well, with the person she was committing adultery, she should have died for those sins. Uh, but Jesus said, I, can, I don't condemn thee either. Go and sin no more. Jesus is in the business of forgiving people. When you bear you feel like you don't feel like you should be forgiven. God loves you. God wants to forgive you. God say, get up. Go and sin no more. I'm giving you another opportunity. I'm going to give you another chance to do what's right. You see, tonight there is no sin too great, no guilt too large to overcome that God can't forgive you. 
There's no uh, sin so great that God can't forgive. I've done this and I've done that. Uh, you could have messed up majorly. You may have done something you'd regret deeply. But tonight, God still loves you. God still wants to forgive you. All you've got to do is come down. All you got to say, Jesus, uh, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, uh, cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Uh, and God will forgive you according to your faith. Uh, and then all you got to do is get up. Uh, forgive yourself. Walk out the door and say, you know what? I'm going to live for Jesus every day. I'm going to live for God every single day. I'm not going to go back to the things that I used to do. I'm going to walk out a new person. I'm going to walk out a new creature. All God is saying is go and sin no more. It's time to repent. It's time to turn the other direction. Go the opposite way. Turn around from the direction that you're going. Turn around from the sin and say, God, help me. Help me to overcome all these different things that are going on in my life. God, I need you. I need your saving power. You see, God, he came to deliver us from our sins. He came to deliver the world through Jesus Christ. He came to set the captives free. See, people who are bound in chains to sin, they can't free themselves. No matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you may say, well, I, um, I'll do this program and I'll do that. And, and you know, uh, um, and I'll do all these things to break free the chains of sin, the chains of addiction, the chains of bad habits that we can't overcome, the chains of bad choices and past regrets, the chains of doing the wrong thing and having no power over ourselves to conquer what is hindering us. People can't free themselves. We all can create good and bad habits. We all have a choice to make that comes our way. But many times, though, we fail to overcome, to make the right choice. We tell ourselves that I'll never do that again. It's the New Year's 2024, and many people have made their New Year's resolutions, uh, and they made the choice, uh, and they made the decision. They've said to themselves, uh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to drink, or I'm not going to go and party anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my act together. I'm going to do what I know I should be doing. And it may happen for a short time, but in the end, it seems like they fa- end up failing. And people can't seem to break free of the sin. They can't seem to break free uh, of what's plaguing them. And we realize that a person who's a captive, they need someone to save them. They need someone to come and deliver them those chains that you can't seem to break. Uh, We need someone to come and deliver us. We need someone uh, to come on the scene with a power that's greater than our own. We need someone, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, to come in and break the chains. Uh, It doesn't have to be a physical captivity, but a spiritual one where we get in our mind and we tell ourselves things aren't true that aren't true. uh, And we begin to believe lies. uh, And God's able to break those chains. Uh, God is able to deliver for the men and women uh, who are bound in sin, uh, who can't control themselves. Uh, God is able to deliver you tonight. In Mark chapter 5, verses 4 through 5. Because they have been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains have been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Here was the man who was called Legion. Nobody could save him. Nobody could control him. Nobody could free him from his own captivity in his mind. They tried to tame him. They tried to cure this man. They tried uh, to bring peace to this man. uh, But no man could do it. No one could do anything to deliver him. It wasn't until Jesus came. It wasn't until Jesus came on the scene. And he cast those demons out uh, into the the swine that were nearby. Jesus brought deliverance uh, to this man who couldn't seem to bring deliverance to himself. Tonight, Jesus, uh, he can deliver you. Jesus uh, can deliver you from your sins tonight if you come to him you see tonight we need the blood of Jesus it was the blood shed at Calvary for the remission of sins in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 he said in almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission 
It took the shedding of blood, a sacrifice to take away or push back a person's sins in the Old Testament. But with Jesus, it only took one sacrifice. With Jesus, it only took one shedding of blood. With Jesus, it only took one time. And he's able to take away all your sins. It takes a person and makes them as white as snow. That's why we sing about the nothing but the blood of Jesus. We realize the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary for our sins is able to wash us. It's able to make us as white as snow. It's able to clean us up. It's not the blood itself, but the act of what Jesus did on that cross when he died for you and I when he went to hell for you in our place what can wash away our sins nothing but the blood no good work no amount of good work of your own willpower can save you tonight it's only through Jesus Christ you can try to live a good moral life you can do everything that's right and seemingly good you can feed the poor. You can uh, help the homeless. You can uh, help other your neighbors. You can love people as all you want. Uh, but it's not going to save you tonight. It's not going to get you to heaven. Uh, uh, if The Bible tells us that uh, in the Old Testament, uh, if they offended in just one part of the law, they were guilty of the whole thing. And so we realize uh, we've already sinned. We've already uh, come short of the glory of God. We've already uh, messed up in one part of the law, so we're guilty of it. But Jesus made a way that we can come to him, uh, that we can be saved tonight. We can be delivered by the power of Almighty God. You see, finally, all you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. He said what? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All you got to do is believe tonight on the Lord Jesus Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. That is the word of God tonight. Believe. Confess your sins. And the Bible tells us he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So many times we hold doubts. And so many times we think, oh, God will never forgive me. Oh, God will never pardon me. I just messed up. I've asked for forgiveness once. And I just messed up over and over again. I keep it. And why would God even forgive me? Why? Because God still loves you. God still cares about you. Right now, you're in this service. Right now, you're you're hearing this message, and right now, God has given you another opportunity, another chance to, to make things right with Him. He says, I still love you. I still care about you. I still want to do a miracle in your life. You see, belief is taking a step of faith. We have to take that step of faith. We have to step out and say, you know what? I'm going to follow God. I don't understand. I don't see where everything's going to lead me. Uh, but I know God said, if I'll just believe, uh, I'll have everlasting life. Uh, if I'll just believe, uh, he'll, not, he'll not lead me astray. If I, if I follow him, uh, he'll lead me to the still waters. Uh, he'll lead me to the green pastures. Uh, he'll lead me. Uh, he'll guide me all the way to heaven. Uh, I may not understand all that's going to go on around me, but I know God. God can take care of me. I know God will do something in my life. But do you believe? He didn't send his son to, to, to condemn us. He didn't send his son to destroy this world. He came to save men and women from their sins. As a musician, come. God loves you tonight. With every head bowed and eyes closed in reverence to the Lord tonight. God loves you and God cares about you. And God wants to save you. God wants to deliver you. But you got to.